Okay, respectable Dean of Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science IPB University, Dr. Insinyur Ferdinand Yulianda, MSC. Honorable Director of International Program of IPB University, Professor Dr. Iskandar Siregar. Honorable Our General Lecturer, Mr. Syamsul Arifin from Indonesian Food Safety Profession Association. Honorable to all the participants, and of course, all the invited guests that already have that already here with us virtually. Good afternoon, all. First of all, let us rise to our Almighty God for the healthy life and for the opportunity that been given to us to attend this event today. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrea Brata, and I'm here with my friend. Hello, my name is Tia Rizna Kartika, and it's precious opportunity for us to be your master of ceremony in this big event, the opening of the summer course of seafood sustainability and safety in Asia Pacific. This summer course event is focused on the quality and safety of fishery products. The summer course will be held online and divided into 14 lectures over two weeks with the time seafood from farm to table, ensuring the authenticity of seafood. Biotechnology is to ensure a quality and safety of seafood, traditional seafood processing and seafood processing by products. Um, today, uh, there will be a present form that you need to feel in this end of the session. So make sure for you to stand by until the end of the session. Yes, right here. Yeah. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before we step up into our main event, let us hear the welcoming speech from Distinguished Dean of Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, IPB University, to Dr. Ferdinand Yulianda. Time is yours. Okay, thank you, Andy. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, speaker, and all uh, participants and colleagues. Especially, I, I see uh, Professor Iskandar yeah, from uh, International collaboration office, IPB University. Yeah, first of all, let us thank to the almighty God because of his blessing, we are able to join in this uh, summer course. Welcome you all to Bogor, West Java uh, in Indonesia. Welcome to the third uh, summer course of Department of Aquatic Product uh, Technology Faculty of uh, Fisheries and Marine Science, IPB University. Bogor yeah, is located in West Java yeah, province, yeah, around 37 kilometers south of Jakarta, the capital city of the Republic of Indonesia. Two decades ago, yeah, the town of Bogor was the capital on Indone of Indonesia during the brief uh, British uh, occupation. And under, under the name um, Buden Zo, it was also the summer capital of the Dutch in the hot, dry season. Bogor's epithet is Kota Hujan, yeah, we call it. The, the meaning is uh, city of rain. Statistically, it is the rainiest city on Java. Locals jokingly advise getting any sightseeing done in the morning because it's guaranteed to rain in the afternoon. That is a bit of historical story about Bogor in the past. I am thanking 
the organizer, uh, the Department of Aquatic Product Technology, yeah, Faculty of uh, Fisheries and Marine Science, for hosting this event, and also International Collaboration Office, IPB University, for supporting this event. I'm greatly impressed by the program of this summer course. The combined knowledge and experience of today's speaker yeah? and the next 14 working days of discussion and observation should be a guarantee for fruitful discussion on this extremely important subject. Specifically, we are here for the opening of the Department of Aquatic Product Technology Summer Course, Seafood Sustainability and Safety in Asia Pacific. The number of participants attending this summer course reached 140 students from over 20 institutions you know, consist of participants of ASEAN countries, you know, including Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Pakistan, and from other continents as well, such as Italy, Tanzania, and the United States. Of course, yeah, the, uh, the activities are adjusted to the current condition of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, IPB University is the first and the oldest fisheries higher education institution in Indonesia. We have a vision to be the center of excellence for fisheries and marine science and technology education and research in Indonesia and to produce scholar to help the country's economic development through sustainable utilization of fish and other inland and marine aquatic resources. And this vision will be achieved together with five departments in this faculty, including aquaculture, aquatic resources management, aquatic product technology, fisheries resources utilization, and marine science and technology. Seafood is the most efficient source of protein on the world. However, overfishing activities through all the 1980s and 1990s resulted in depletion of seafood resources worldwide. Many fish species Previously, easily be found and catch, you know, getting more and more difficult to find it. Sustainable aquaculture and marine capture fisheries should supply over six times more food than they do today. In turn, spending more than two thirds of the edible meat the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimate will be needed to feed the future global population. We need to note, however, that not only sustainable seafood is a matter for human food, but safety is also an important factor. Fish is highly perishable food. The high protein content is an ideal for the bacterial growth. 
Thus, these two terms, sustainable and safety, are needed for sustainable human future. Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science is the frontal education institution on seafood sustainable and safety study and research. We have developed many programs to achieve sustainable and safe seafood. This summer course is one of these. I hope you will be inspired by the teaching and the learning environment this summer course. And also that it will make you open to the possibility of coming to the IPB University to pursue a degree or to do research. I hope you will also have time to avail yourself of all the fried culture, social programs that you can enjoy from other students. Thank you and enjoy the summer course. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for the welcoming speech, sir. And next, the second speech will be delivered by Distinguished Director of International Program of IPB University. And afterward, uh, we would like to request Professor Dr. Iskandar Siregar to officially open the third summer course of seafood sustainability and safety in Asia Pacific. Please, time is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Kartika. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would like to name you or call you. Thank you, uh, the Honorable Dean. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, good afternoon, and maybe also good morning if there are uh, our research persons attending also this event. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting me, and I'm pleased to be here together with you all. Yeah. So, dear esteemed uh, Dean, Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Sciences, and uh, esteemed respected head of the Department of Aquatic Product Technology, uh, Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, IPB University, our research person for the opening courses or the kick off courses this afternoon, and also uh, our <coughs> proud chairperson and members of the organizing committee yeah, who work hard to realize this event. And very important, last but not least, all the distinguished participants, in this case is our beloved students. Yeah. So we are on behalf of international office, uh, very glad to meet you although virtually. And again, would like to welcome you the opening of this third summer course on seafood sustainability and safety in the Asia Pacific. Yeah. Although we are unable to meet physically due to the pandemic, it is still a pleasure to witness this opening of the summer course. And I wish us continued a good health during this difficult situation. Yeah. So we also notice from the organizing committee that there are a total of at least 11 speakers, national and international speakers, especially from our partner university. And also we are delighted that also Indonesian speakers will also attend to enrich uh, the summer courses program yeah, from different uh, parties. I note like Asosiasi Profesi Keamanan Pangan Hayati or APKEPI, Fish Quarantine and Inspection Agency also will be our resource person in the next 14 days. Yeah. In particular, again, we are thankful for registering these summer courses to our, in our record around 100, more than 130 participants coming from 20 institutions across nine countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, Tanzania, Thailand, Pakistan, US, and Italy. So to provide some context on the summer course thematic area, IPB University is 
actively pursuing collaboration with a variety of stakeholders in order to broaden our local, regional, and global impact. Summer course is a global platform under current situation to network expansion. And this year we are IPB University conducting 25 to five summer courses. All are planned to be conducted virtually. So uh, this uh, summer course is one of the out of 25 IPB summer courses. We hope after the summer courses, we all participate becoming a mini alumni, yeah? and we work together to facilitate resources exchanges, very important. Our Dean mentioned about the student exchange in the near future and sharing of best, best practice during the discussion. I anticipate engaging in numer numerous additional activity during this virtual summer course and also in the future. In particular, in, in the era of now, ecosystem restoration, sustainable development goals target as a global agenda, we wish to accelerate the collaborative initiative despite the pandemic. On behalf of IPB University, again, I sincerely hope for a fruitful and engaging summer courses. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. What an enlightening speech, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Iskandar Siregar, the Director of International Program of IPB University, for your welcoming speech and for officially open the event. Thank you very much. Now, before we start on into our main event, uh, we will have a photo session first. So please, to all the participants, turn your camera on so we can see all your beautiful and handsome face. Yes, of course, Fia. Yeah. And we will see until the last slide in here. We will see who's still uh, off their camera and we really ask you to open your camera, guys. Okay, we will still, we will, we still wait for all the participants to open your camera. Okay, there are five slides in my screen here, and we ask the operator to stand by to screenshot and take a picture of us to our the participant. Uh, prepare your best style, guys. We are going to take a picture with you. So I will count from one to three from the first slide. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Next. The second page. The second page. One, two, three. Okay, we will move forward to the next one. One, two, three. Okay, next page. One, two, three. Okay, next. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, I okay, think that's yeah. all, yeah? Okay, give a massive applause and give your thumbs up emotion to share your excitement reaction. Yes, of course. Well, gentlemen, now we will start our session in this third summer course with the presentation from our general lecture from Indonesian Food Safety Profession Association. And before we move forward, the operator police uh, display the curriculum vitae from our speaker. Okay, and the okay, yeah, and the uh, before that, uh, I see in the comment, the calm comment, there are so many uh, participants who already uh, greeting. Yes, I see them too. We want to hear from. 
Philippines, where are you guys? Yeah, let's check sound again, okay, Andrew. Yeah, we will have to check sound from yeah. Philippines. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. everyone. Wow. wow. So amazing. So many, yeah. I'm going to go to the Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Another Next. country, Andrew. Another country. We, okay. we have from mm. Malaysia. Malaysia. Hello, Malaysia. Hello, Hello. 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 How are you guys? Apa kabar? Kabar baik. Oke, kabar baik. Oke, next Ande. Next we have the, the is there from Thailand guys? Is there anyone from Thailand? I don't think so, Evia. Yes, yeah. hello. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, next oh. from Indonesia, from Indonesia. Is there from Indonesia? Halo. Halo. Halo everyone. Halo everyone. Halo. 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 Okay, here we are, Mr. Shamsul Arifin. And as you can see, guys, he has a lot of experiences in food safety and quality. Mr. Shamsul has his bachelor degree in Aquatic Products Technology Department of IPB University and continue his master degree in Marchubuana University, mastering industrial engineering. So, Mr. Shamsul Arifin, you have one hour to present your presentation, and after that, we will have a discussion with the participant. And without any further ado, we would like to welcome on screen Mr. Shamsul Arifin. Time is yours. Hello, test. Hello, okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, all of you around the world. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, how are you? So uh, I'm happy. I'm glad uh, uh, to be around you to uh, <clears throat> just to participate about the summer course. Uh, my name is Samsul Arifin. You can call me Sam. Actually, uh, I just want to apology that uh, actually uh, this is not in the my office. I am in the airport now, so probably it will be any sound, back sound about the falling of uh, aircraft for boarding. So, uh, because I have a uh, miss of schedule, uh, I'm looking at my agenda. It will be 10.30, but I be, uh, I just realized that it uh, 1.30. So this is my mistake, but uh, show must go on. So if you have any problem with my sound, with my uh, connection, with my uh, back sound, uh, back noise, I'm, uh, I'm apologetic about that. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, welcome all of you you uh, especially uh, thank you for Institute Pertanian Bogor Bogor Agriculture University which is uh, my alumni uh, thank you very much for giving the opportunity for uh, just to give an awareness just to give an introduction about the sustainable seafood so I'm telling you uh, my background my background is now I'm working for uh, Global Reliance International as a managing director. My job is just to train people, giving a consultancy uh, for the food industries, for the fisheries industries. I'm working also closely with the Ministry of Marine and Science, uh, Ministry of Marine and Fisheries of Republic Indonesia as a technical advisor. Also with Indonesian FDA, uh, we call it BPOM, Badan Pengawas Obat dan Makanan, as a technical advisor. And I also working for uh, uh, scheme owner about the standard certification for best seafood practices as a country coordinator. And then uh, I have uh, working experience in the field for the processing of shrimp industries in Indonesia, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, shrimp industry at that time in Tarun Pokpang, Indonesia, or CP Bahari as a plant manager and then continuing working for SGS as a lead auditor for food safety and 
fisheries within for 10 years. And then uh, now I'm working uh, also uh, as a subcontract auditor for some CB, for some working for certification body in Indonesia, Asia Pacific, and also in the Middle East. <clears throat> okay, just a short introduction is too, too much introduction. Uh, next time, uh, if you want to discuss, let me know. We, uh, I just want to uh, give an introduction of about the sustainable fishery. So let me uh, share the screen and I can continue to giving the material. Okay, wait a minute. Wait. Sorry, I have problem with my file. Wait a minute. Give me a moment. Okay. This is it. Okay. Can you see my screen, all of you? Clear, yeah? Yes. Okay, the presentation uh, title is Sustainable Seafood Certification Program. What I'm going to tell you is uh, current situation. So many people want to expect the seafood coming from uh, marine, coming from wild catch, or coming from aquaculture is sustainable. So, but what is sustainable actually? Sustainable is uh, we call fish sourced from well-managed healthy fish stock and a couch farm or farm using method that have minimum impact on the environment. So the, <clears throat> the system means that uh, uh, how do we make a seafood sustainable? We need to prevent the habitat damage to stopping the spread of disease. And there is a lot of we can do to improve the sustainability of seafood. We need to combating, we need to avoiding overfishing, we need to limit a bycatch. So bycatch and byproduct, some things like the same, but it's different. Bycatch and byproduct is not the same. It's sometimes people think bycatch is byproduct. No, this is not the same. Bycatch not the same with byproduct. Byproduct is when we produce seafood in the processing plant and the aval or in the reject or the waste is belongs to byproduct. By if we are targeting the fish during fishing and we are have not a target of fish, that's we call it bycatch. And we need to preserve the habitat. We need to stop the illegal fishing because this is terrible. This is very huge activities that can causing uh, habitat, can causing ecosystem is damaged. And we need also to limit the wild fish used as a feed. As you know, sea catch, it could be as a food, it could be as a feed, right? So can you imagine that anchovy uh, catch in the Peruvian uh, sea, it will be produced for feed, produced for the fish meal, fish meal and fish oil. The fish meal and fish oil will be as a raw material to produce the feed meal, the feed. The feed will be send to the aquaculture as a feed and a become a food. In current situation, if all of fish is belong for, is going to feed, not for food, the, the stock of food, the stock of fish as a food, it will be decreased. So that's why we, we need to limit wild fish as a feed. Okay, I will tell you later. 
we need to consider the climate, we need to protect the human rights, because a lot of issue regarding the people, a lot of issue regarding the workers, a lot of issue regarding the bondage, regarding the uh, uh, forced labor, regarding the uh, slavery. We need to manage pollution and disease. We need Hello, Mr. Samsul Arifin, are you still with us? Hello. I think for Samsul has a connection problem here. Uh... Defend farm fish. Okay. Okay, I think Mr. Samsul Arifin is out from the Zoom here via. Yeah? Okay, and he already here again with us. Hello, Mr. Samsu Arifin. Hello, Mr. Samsu. Are you still in here? Yeah, okay. Sorry. Uh, I just kicked out from the Zoom because of probably limited uh, bandwidth. So okay. when I, I, I will uh, continue in this part or, or in this part? or this part. Okay, I will start with the uh, restart with the sources of seafood. As you know, there are two sources of seafood coming from wildcat seafood and coming from farm seafood. And we call it aquaculture, right? And then this is the how to figure about the seafood change, where it belong to, where it's going to, so the wild catch, the things to consider is there is a lot of requirements about the fishing vessel. There is requirement of the, about the fishing gear. There is a requirement how to collect and handling in the fishing port, in the landing site. And aquaculture, there is a requirements about how to breed, breeding operation, hatchery, culture in the pond, in the in the sea also, in the, the river, and many types of uh, aquaculture type and harvesting. All of products coming from wild catch and aquaculture will be processed for further product. It could be a canned seafood, it could be a frozen seafood, it could be a fresh seafood, dried seafood, it could be a seaweed fur and a carotenone. And then the products will be sent both in the food service, retail, or wait a minute, or the wholesale. And what about the byproducts? The byproducts of seafood, it could be produced for fish meal or fish oil. You can imagine from the tuna canning, there is a piece of product that cannot uh, uh, met, in the space, met to the space specification. And the products will be uh, reprocess or will be going to the uh, byproduct for fish meal or fish oil. And then fish meal and fish oil will be going to the feed mills to be processed a feed as a feed. For example, shrimp feed, tilapia feed, or salmon feed in the pond culture or in the river or in the lake. It depends on the type of aquaculture. Okay, but the other ways, the wild catch fisheries, it could also process the fish meal or fish oil and going to the feed bowl. That's why I'm talking uh, in the previous slide that feed, avoiding wild catch produce for a feed. Wild catch seafood must be priority for human and then for feed. But when the feed 
is uh, coming, the source of uh, fish meal and fish oil coming from the wild catch, it will have to reduce because the population, because of it will be uh, reducing the fish stock in the sea. Okay. And uh, fish oil, we can produce a, a food supplement and then also going to the retail, wholesale, and food service. This is for human. This is for species of aquaculture. Okay, this is the seafood change. So what now is the issue? Then people eat the fish. People in Europe, people in America, people in Australia, even in Indonesia. The first question is safe to eat. Safe mean not containing any hazard, food safety hazard, just a microbiological contamination, physical contamination. Does it comply to the product quality? Is it size is correct? Is any defect that affecting to the quality? Is color is met the specification? It weight as a label. For example, label is 100 grams for one kilos or one libs, but actual is less than that. And any additional food additive exceed the permit level. For example, when you have put a colorant, artificial sweetener, for example, preservative and other, is any exit the permit level or any chemicals contaminant exit the maximum residual limit? Is there any heavy metals? Is there any antibiotics yeah. that not allowed to use or prohibited to use? Any pesticide exit the maximum residual. Any traceable? Traceable is coming from where? The fish coming from where? Coming from Indonesia? Coming from China Sea? Coming from Atlantic Sea or other area? It's involved with the illegal fishing. This is uh, every country is combating the IEU, illegal, unreported, and unregulated because it's now it become very, very strict related to IUU. Every country want free or combating the IUU. Overfishing is an issue about depletion when the stock of fish is already gone. Fishing gear is complying to the regulation and the risk of habitat or impact. Any significant environmental impact, farm or fishing ground area, landing site area, is it any impact to the environment? Farm in that area that giving negative impact to the local community. Is there any uh, risk to the people surrounding the farm? And is there any uh, using forced labor, child worker, delivery? Is there wages and benefit in comply to the minimum regulation? This is all about the issue comes out to the surface and people think that they need to an assurance. They need a guarantee when they eat the fish and when they are, the customer eat the sustainable fish means that they have contribution, contribution to the world. So how to ensure the seafood is coming from sustainable sources? If you check the website to the seafoodwatch.org, the seafood recommendation from Seafood Watch program, which examines a number of different factors for overfishing, bycatch, impact to the food webs, habitat disturbance, and more, they put into the four category of fish. They have a green color. It's called best choice. They have a, a green color. It's called certified or orange or yellow is good alternative or even red avoiding. By selecting the three of the option, best choice, certified, good alternative for avoid, this is make people have a trust, make people uh, can select and can do a sorting which one they need to buy, they have to buy. So people now aware when they choose the best choice or certified, it could be good for them. For, for them. But how? How they know? 
So by selecting seafood with sustainable sustainability label, so we call it certified, certified, and certified by third party certification program, which is recognized. So now in the world, there are so many sustainability label, but I will highlight two of them. It could be a best aquaculture practices. It could be best seafood practices. AAC, Aquaculture Stewardship Council, or MSC, Marine Stewardship Council, Friend of the Sea and Global Gap. There are so many options. And people now aware, when they look at the logo, look at the label of the products, and the label of the products containing such an eco labeling logo, so they have a trust, they have a confidence to purchase, to buy seafood coming from sustainable sources. That's why certification program is now very important to show to the customer, to prove to the customer, to make a confidence level to the customer that they are eat the right seafood. They eat a sustainable seafood. Okay, this is the explanation about the best choice, eco certified, good alternative for avoiding. Uh, you can uh, check the seafoodwatch.org from Monterey Bay Aquarium in USA. Best choice means buy first. They are well managed and couch or farm responsibly. Blue means by these certified products, they are equivalent a seafood watch good alternative or better. Good alternative means you have to buy, but be aware that are concerned with how they catch farm or manage. So this is just like a, a traffic light, blue, blue, yellow, and red, but they put another now become a blue. Previously, they have only three category green, yellow, and red. And when they have a label avoiding, so you need to avoid to buy these products. So when you select, uh, uh, you can uh, visit this website and then you can type everything about the species, just type anything. So for example, uh, Vaname or Monodon for shrimp. You can see, uh, the label is it green, blue, or even red? Yeah, but it's complicated if you need to check in the website first. The easiest things, the easiest things, is about the certification program. When you see the logo like this in the products, ah, sorry, I will skip it first and then I will come back to. Uh, I will skip just just like this. When you see the product, just like this, make people make consumer or customer or consumer confidence they are already recognized by third party certification and coming from sustainable sources. So that's why in my presentation, introducing to you to the students regarding the certification program because in the future, certification will be very, very important. Okay, so what is the certification? Certification program is a process by which a certification body or entity give assurance, right? Give assurance that the products, process, or service confirm to the specified requirements of the standard. So who is certification body? Certification body is competent and recognized body, either government or non-governmental that conducts certification and audit against the recognized standards. So I'm working before with SGS. SGS is one of the biggest, the largest certification body in the world. So SGS will certify any facility any company who wants to be recognized or who want to be certificated. 
by doing an audit. So that's why in my CV, all of my qualification as a now auditor, because auditing only can be done by approved auditor, right? So this is part of my job because I have traveled around the world just doing the auditing for many companies, for many facilities, they want to be certified. Okay. And what is COC, chain of custody? This is a system of traceability whereby the ownership, possession of responsibility of the products is accounted for at all times and through all transfer of custody. So when you put the logo, for example, this is sustainable seafood in the products, do you trust? Is there any risk that inside the packaging this is not coming from the certified seafood, not coming from the certified fishing ground, not coming from the certified aquaculture, for example. So this chain of custody audit is very, very important to ensure all of product inside the bag, all of product inside the packaging is coming from the certified sources. Okay, that is chain of custody just to maintain the traceability. So what's driving a certification? Consumers now have become increasingly aware and concerned about the foods they buy and whether or not it has been eco-labeled. So eco-labels, that packaging with the logo, that's mean eco-label logo. Buyers and or retailers have corporate responsibility mission and certification help them to demonstrate how they are fulfilling that mission. Industries, organization, and governments have become involved in requiring or promoting certification as a way to achieve improvement goals that are driving a certification. Sometimes NGO highlighted in the past, sometimes in an unbalanced way, problems in the global civil supply chain most often focusing on the environmental and social problems. And the buyers want to have an assurance that the products that they acquire from the store supply chains consistently meet the guidelines, specification or expectation they have specified. By requiring that the suppliers achieve third party certification according to the international standard, buyers mitigate the change of this product exposing them to such a risk. So this is many things that need a certification program, need a recognition program, but we cannot recognize ourselves. For example, I have a factory uh, producing a hand tuna, for example, and then I just put the logo, I just put the wording that coming from sustainable seafood. And your buyers, your customer will asking, who say your product is sustainable? I say that. I don't believe you. That's just your claim. We need to somebody else, somebody who look at the objective things and then giving you assessment, giving you an evaluation based on, based on the standard, based on the specification, based on the requirement, based on the international standard. And the certification body is called third party certification. Okay. So what do NGO say about the certified uh, seafood? In Greenpeace, you can check the greenpeace.org. Org. Some acknowledge that viable aquaculture certification scheme has been developed over the past decade, but they maintain that fully credible certification system for sustainable wild seafood do not yet exist now. Sustainable wild seafood is have a certification, specific certification for wild seafood. I will tell you later. Nevertheless, certification scheme claim for both sustainably farm and wild cut seafood are the best option for cons consumer to buy. The best option consumer to buy. WWF 
conservation organization is concerned about the negative effect of the industry on environment and society. So WWF promotes awareness among aquaculture producers regarding the importance of responsible practices. Also with ICL, HAL upon the business community, key implementing partners of 2030 agenda to use only a credible standard as a tools to increase sustainable practices and report on SDGs projects or sustainable development goal program. So this is the logo. This is uh, uh, the, current, the current certification standard that recognize around the world. We have a friend of the sea, we have a global gap, we have a ESC, aquaculture, stewardship, council, and MSC, marine stewardship council, BAP, best aquaculture practices, and BSP, best seafood practices. Let me just uh, giving you an overview. Friend of the sea, the main audit or the main certification is on the fishing ground. So they are certified the fishing area. Friend of the sea is coming from Italy. Yeah, yeah. somebody in the, uh, <clears throat> I not remember the name of Paolo Bray is creating the friend of the sea due to some of uh, uh, fish coming from, you don't know, you know, uh, IUU certification. So friend of the sea is focusing on the fishing ground. And global gap, global gap is for aquaculture. Aquaculture products. So in the beginning stage, the global gap only focusing on the good agriculture practices and then expanding for the aquaculture. So global gaps also means good aquaculture practices. And we have ASC. ASC is uh, uh, initiated by WWF. And this is very well recognized in Europe, especially in European Union countries. Now ASC is also recognized in United States. And also MSC. MSC is now the trusted or the biggest certification for the sustainable seafood. MSC is focusing also, also this almost the same with plan of the sea, they are focusing in the fishing ground. So the fishing area will be certified by MSC. So MSC is also a initiative by WWF with the Unilever at the beginning of story about the history of WW, uh, MSC, you can see in the website. And then now w, uh, MSC is become a, the largest and the biggest seafood certification in the world, but specific for the fishing grounds. And what next is best aquaculture practices. It's developed by GAA. GAA is Global Aquaculture Alliance. In USA, and now become a very big recognition around the world and recognized by most of the retailers in the world. And the new one is best seafood practices. This is specific for wild catch. and BAP specified for aquaculture. Best seafood practices and best aquaculture practices is the same owner or is the same uh, release from USA, from USA. BSP is uh, from GSA, Global Seafood Alliance and B BAP is issued by or promoted by or initiated by GAA, Global Aquaculture Alliance. Now they are in the same organization. It will be a GSA, Global Seafood Assurance. And I'm working in 
this standard. Or I'm working as a country coordinator for the Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam, and Singapore in Southeast Asia to maintaining the certification program. That's why I will highlight about two programs in the next presentation. But people can choose the factory or the farm or the uh, uh, tea catch industries can choose which standard is the best for them. It depends on the market requirements and the organizational goals. So let's ask the question with them. Do you do your customer want to purchase certification? Do they demand a specific standard? Do they expect certification of all or only part of the supply chain? Do they require a social environment or animal welfare aspect? Or do they want a consumer facing eco label logo? So when you have a wild catch product, first it could be good if you have MSC. If you good, if you have BSP, best civil practices. If you are aquaculture, you can choose either is ASC, either is PAP, global gap, yeah, or both or with the FOS, front of the sea. Okay. So there are no specific uh, issue that one of standard is best or uh, superior than the others. It's depend on the market, depend on the customer, depend on the buyers, depend on the user. They want to certify what? They want certified MSC, go ahead with MSC. Okay. But a specific requirements of each standard, it could be a different. So I want to tell you about the BSP and the BAP certification program and overview. BAP have a four standard, farm standard, hatchery standard, feed mill standard, and plant. And PSP also the same. We have a RFS, responsible fishing special standard. We have a responsible fisheries, and the products will be sent to the processing plant, to the processing plant, and packed into the end product with eco label logo. So the coverage of BAP is coverage from the firm, hatchery, feed mills, and the products will deliver to the plant. Processing plants, seafood processing plants, is uh, <clears throat> it could be a big company, it could be a small company, it could be a medium company, it depends. As long as they are recognized by BAP and certified with the SPS, seafood processing standard, it could be they can claim on the logo on the label. Also BSP. So this is one platform, BAP and BSP in one platform. BSP specialized in aquaculture and BSP in the wild catch. Okay. So best seafood practices, ensuring practice throughout the wild seafood supply chain. So the standard of responsible fishing standard is talking about the fishing vessel only. And the standard, how they are processed in the plant is different standard. It could be it would, uh, it available in the seafood processing standard. So in the RFAS, it, we need to digest information about the vessel management and safety system. There is some requirements related to the management policy procedure, related to ETP, environmental impact management. There is also requirements about the catch, traceability management, how to operate the license and catch safety and food hygiene. In other way, RFS, or RFS responsible fishing vessel standard, also concern about the crew, about the people, about the worker, related to the right, the safety and well-being. Yeah. So the RFS is not only talking about the fishing vessel, but talking also 
about the social compliance to the people, to the worker, to the labor, related to the child labor, related to the uh, uh, remuneration, working hours, etc. So you can learn more about the BSP certification for responsible fishing standard. You can download this book, this standard, and bspcertification.org, and it just released on 12 May 2021. This is the version number one. So this standard, this certification standard, very new, and it will be uh, on the way to go to the uh, recognition around the world. And for PAP, it's more established because PAP is since 1997 is already established. Certification facility in supply chains, starting from hatchery, starting from feed mills, the feed and the nursery will come to the farm and it will be raised in the pond, in the river, in the lake, or in the marine culture. And the product from the farm will send to the processor and going to the suppliers, food retail, and then to the customs. So the sustainable aquaculture certification program is starting from hatchery feed mills, farms, and then processor. And the standard will be a different standard between each stage. We have a hatchery certification. We have a feed mill certification. We have a farm certification, and we have a processor certification. And the pillars of responsible raised seafood is not only related to food safety, but also we are talking about the environmental responsibility in compliance with standards that address issues as habitat, conservation, water quality, and even and social accountability, ensuring that producers are following the best practice in human rights, labor law, and employee health and safety. Food safety, yeah, it's clear that assurance that no antibiotics, prohibited antibiotics or banned antibiotics or other chemicals are used, and that all approved chemicals treatment are carried out in the responsible fashion. Animal welfare is best practice in animal husbandry, addressing issues such as disease control. Four pillars. When you comply with all of the requirements, we can say that our product from aquaculture is sustainable. So this is uh, information about the aquaculture certification for fin fish and crustacean farms. There are four pillars, remember. The first pillar, talking about the food safety. The second pillar, talking about the social accountability, environmental impact, and animal welfare. You can download the standard in the BAP certification, www.bap certification org and you can find any information related to standard you can download free for free and you can read carefully which one is uh, your concern about and the other standard is BAP hatchery best aquaculture practices for hatchery talking with the 15th uh, section starting from the regulatory compliance community worker safety and then this is about the environmental, and this is about the escapees, GMOs related to wildlife, animal welfare, and food safety, and also traceability. And this is the feed mill standard, so the uh, feed factory, feed mill factory, and also to be certified when they want the product is recognized. Property right regulation, HACCP. Ah, this is about the food safety. Hazard analysis and critical control point. So the concept of food safety, not also related to the food products, 
in the current concept. Feed safety is must equal with the food safety. Why? Because the feed will be also consumed by people indirectly. I mean, when the shrimp feeding by feed and they, they eat the feed, it will be eaten by people. So when the feed meal, when the feed is not safe to be consumed by shrimp, it will be the hazard. It will be stay in the shrimp. And then, uh, for example, antibiotics. When the feed is containing any antibiotics, the feed is eaten by shrimp. And then the antibiotic will be have a residue in the shrimp. And then people eat the shrimp with the antibiotic residue. And will it will it will not can be it will cannot be eliminated. It will stay there and then accumulate it in the people who eat the shrimp. Okay. <clears throat> Next community relation. Fish meal, fish oil. So in the feed meal certification, they concern about the use of fish meal coming from wild catch, fish meal coming from reduction fishery, fish meal coming from certified fishery, including fish oil and also soy. And then uh, there are standards regarding the disposal supplies, waste management, and yes, traceability. So the key for the certification of aquaculture, not only in the farm, but also from hatchery and from feed mill. And the last standard is processing plant standard. This is when the seafood produced, when the seafood transformed from the raw material to the finished product. And most of uh, us eat seafood that already processed in the processing plant. There is a nine element, nine section or nine clauses required. And then so many things that in this standard is technically regulated because food is highly regulated and also seafood. Many, many risks coming from the seafood, not only the uh, physical hazard, not only the chemical hazard, not only the food safety hazard or biological hazard, but also they have a several inform uh, several uh, requirements related to social, related to waste management, related to animal welfare. For example, when the fish coming, live fish coming into the processing plant, how they manage, how they kill immediately the fish, how they stun the fish, how they are make the fish is not uh, not have. Uh, many things that make it hurt so they too have to manage in the animal welfare requirements and yes the last is traceability management so when you saw the logo or label on the products that containing just like this cap certified with the four star logo here means that product is coming for certified processor coming from certified farm coming from certified factory and coming from certified feed. So there are four types of logo for BAP. One star logo, two star logo, three star logo, and then four star logo. So what is the point? The point is giving the option for the consumer. When consumer see, oh, four star means that everything can be responsible. But when they are so only one star, so means that they only processing plant certified. They don't know from where coming from, from, from where farm, or which farm coming from the fish or coming from the shrimp. For hatchery, three star. So when feed meal certified, hatchery certified, it could be a three star. But if everything, every single stage of farm, Hatchery, feed and processing plant certified, so they can claim four star logo. So you can check in bubcertification.org many 
processor, many facility has been certified for uh, top uh, four star status. Four star. Okay, this is the previous information. PSP certified put on the label side by side with the MSC means that premium wild cat adduct is coming from certified tortoise recognized by MSC and certified vessel and certified plant by BSP. Okay, when you need information about the uh, uh, standard certification, you can contact us, our office in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, United States, or um, uh, uh, stay in, the, in Jakarta. So you can call me uh, or giving me an email if you need further information. Mm. When you need more uh, uh, detail standard, you can contact me anytime by email or uh, direct question uh, via my WhatsApp or others uh, media social. Okay, uh, I think uh, that's all my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please moderator or uh, the, the team can handle uh, the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Syamsul Arifin for the amazing presentation. And now we will open discussion for you guys who have a question according to presentation that have been given by Mr. Syamsul Arifin. So please your please raise your hand if you have any question or to ask something to Mr. Syamsul Arifin. Okay, guys. We'll see from here who is already raised their hand if there are any question. Oh, and okay. I see Stephen who want to ask a question to Mr. Shangso Arifin. Okay. And, uh, okay. Go ahead for uh, the first one who raise your hand. Stephen, you can unmute your microphone and ask the question to Mr. Chancellor Arifin. Yeah. Stephen, you. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Chancellor. I'm. I have a question about uh, the the quality of uh, seafood, especially in nowadays. Uh, we know that. There are a lot more uh, waste, such as plastics, which becomes uh, a major concern in food safety. What are your thoughts about it? Thank you. Sorry, plastic. What What do you mean with the plastic? The plastic waste. Uh, Use as a packaging, as a packaging, or it's there are two issues about the plastic. The first issue is food safety issue. The second issue about the environmental impact issue. The, the food safety issue that the primary packaging when you eat seafood and the, or what, what, whatever the food yeah and then you open the plastic the plastic will contact with the packaging the plastic sorry the plastic the, the uh, we call it primary packaging will contact with the food so there are food safety issues specific with the chemical migration that the chemicals in the plastic and then when they are can can release to the food when they have a heating process for example so specific plastic as for the primary packaging must be used and they need to be tested. In Indonesia, the, really, uh, the regulation about the primary packaging has been released by BPOM. You can check uh, into the BPOM requirements in the BPOM HK 66604, uh, 6664, I mean, you can check or the news regulation about the plastic or the all not plastic actually all of primary packaging it would be a can tin can it could be a glass it could be a plastic it could have a paper it could be a styrofoam and uh, many things and the second issue is related to the uh, environmental impact the usage of plastic sometimes it could be uh, uh, have an impact to the environmental because it uh, can be cannot be uh, degradable 
And the problem is now the plastic issue is uh, 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 it will be a, a waste and the waste will uh, going to the sea, right? And then a problem will come also within the big city, just like in Jakarta, Surabaya, Manila, uh, and uh, the other city. What does it mean? So people have to reduce. So that's why a lot of campaign about the usage of plastic actually. And in, the, in terms of certification, the usage of plastic is not uh, limited, but they need to consider how they manage the waste. So it's always a uh, requirement in the each standard regarding the waste management, even in the food safety standard or in the sustainability standard, but it's not related to specific uh, requirements for the primary packaging because it's two different things. Okay, that's for my uh, point of view. So there are two aspects related to plastic. First is food safety. The second is related to environment. But as long as the factory, the farm, the hatchery, or the feed mills is also maintaining how they can manage the waste, yeah, that the effort they can do, because we cannot expect uh, we cannot uh, expecting the certified uh, seafood facility can. Uh, significantly change the world with the maintaining or uh, limited usage of plastic. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shamsul, for the answer and thank you for the question, Stephen Young. Okay, we are finding for another question and we already have Joanna Faye Jacinto who already raised her hand. Hello, Joanna. Hello, sir. Okay. Sir Samsul, thank you for yeah. that very uh, wonderful presentation, sir. I'm also concerned with the uh, food safety and as well as in the relationship with the packaging, sir, because we all know that processing of fish generates enormous amount of waste for processing of shrimp, products generates about 50%. And also with the fish, we have a lot of post-harvest losses. And presently, there are concerns about the environment due to plastic packaging, sir. So may I just ask, what is your um, thoughts about, um, is there a possibility that these microplastics can enter into our food chain? And what are now the um, ways that we can determine microplastics um, present in a food or a certain food product, sir. And is there also a possibility that we can turn this post-harvest losses such as fish waste into an edible packaging or a safer uh, food product pack packaging, sir? Okay. A good question, Joanna. Uh, where do you live in the Manila? In the Philippines, sir, yes. Yeah, in, yeah. I mean, in which city? Cebu, Davao, or? Here in Ilocos Norte, sir. It's a province in here in the Philippines. Okay. <clears throat> so because I'm traveling in Philippines so many times. Okay, yes, the, first, the, the first thing is about, the, yeah, again, about the plastic. The issue related to environment. Some people expecting a friend uh, environmental friendly packaging, but this is this is a choice, right? If every single customer specifically uh, asking or uh, requesting the environmental friendly packaging to the uh, producer, it could be a one of a big request, and they must comply with. But yes, the compensation it will be higher cost. Is it accepted or not with the consumer? So the campaign, yes, the, a lot of campaign related to reduce, uh, reduce, uh, reduce, uh, reducing plastic waste. In the requirement of certification, there is a standard that they have to minimize. They have to manage the waste, but they are not a mandatory to replace the plastic with the other packaging because now, yeah, we have also uh, uh, realized that uh, the plastic is uh, the, 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 the effective of packaging, but 
That's why we have also to educate the people or the consumer. Please ensuring that they, when they eat seafood with the plastic, so put the plastic in the uh, in the waste bin that can be uh, recycled because plastic can be recycled, right? And in the several companies who produce the packaging, so we are now uh, changing to the packaging industries, right? Because the fisheries uh, only a uh, user, you know, the fisheries processing plant only the users, right? So who will in charge? Who will responsible also to use uh, recycled packaging? Is the packaging industries, the packaging industries, plastic flexible packaging, hard packaging, or flexible or whatever packaging, right? They are also using the recycle, but the percentage of each material, which one is virgin, which one is recycled material, it will be combined with. So they have a research and development how to ensure that the products is used as much as possible to recycle, right? And the other things that we also need to consider that uh, probably, uh, yeah, you as a student can uh, uh, create uh, products or create a packaging that probably is uh, cheap and more friendly to the environment. Yeah, just like you say that it could be possible, very possible, as long as the mass production and uh, the strength of the product and the quality of the products can uh, uh, can uh, make the products of the seafood products uh, good appearance or good performance during uh, during distribution, during retail, or uh, during uh, <clears throat> display in the retail, during preparing, uh, to preparation in the consumer, or during uh, <clears throat> during uh, surfing in the end of end user. So it means that uh, any possibility, yes, we have a lot of, you have a lot of opportunity to, to create that, and hoping one day we have a, a solution how to reduce the waste of plastic, and change the mindset of the uh, consumer, mindset of the producer, mindset of the retailer using the more environmental friendly packaging. I get okay, that, sir. Thank, thank you thank very you. much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello, okay, sir. Can I also ask a question? Okay. Yes, sir. Solomon. Yes, good afternoon, sir. I'm Solomon Anagatan from Ilocosor Polytechnic State College in the Philippines. My answer is concerns about the traceability of all uh, products or raw materials, sir. Um, is my mother for whenever we bought uh, seashells, scrubs, he, he's asking to the uh, seller where those products came from on what area so yeah Sorry, this, uh, uh, can you can you repeat sir can you repeat my mother taught us um uh whenever we bought uh, uh seafoods mm -hmm. he kept on asking to to the seller what area those came from mm -hmm. so right with regards to traceability of or the quality of the product, uh, is it true that these suppliers or producers are really, really declaring the mm. area where they came from? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good question. You know, in the packaging. In the packaging of products, for example, you can see, right? But the declaration is only for the producer. You don't know where the fish is coming from, okay? This is yes, for sir. the retail product, for example. You can see produced by, but you don't know where it's coming from. Except yes, the materials. For it, yeah, expect the display. For example, Atlantic salmon. So it's must be coming from Atlantic. But who, who will ensure, who will give an assurance, 
who will guarantee you know unless they have recognition unless they have certification that's why the campaign of eco labeling certification of third party standard certification just like pap just like bsp just like msc is to ensure is to giving an assurance to the customers that the product is coming from the real sustainable sources you know uh, probably halal in indonesia is very uh, uh, not popular but it's now mandatory halal certification yeah you know solomon halal certification for the muslim products yeah yes sir the halal when you look at the products with halal with the logo halal what do you feel for the people what do you think oh okay i'm i trust with the products because it's already certified by authority because already certified by recognized party but recognized certification body in your country in indonesia by lppom mui majelis ulama indonesia which is very very trusted by people so when they put the halal logo i trust i confidence that i ate uh, halal products yeah this is the same just like eco label logo when you eat the product that's why we need to campaign about the certification about the recognition because you cannot only say but nobody believe you you put the products coming from you know pacific sea coming from general santos coming from north sulawesi because general santos near the north sulawesi right yes, sir. yeah certain bluefin tuna you say coming from bali strait who believe you somebody with call certification body third party need giving you recognition and the recognition is you can only check by certification and the certification is transparent process you can check to the website and then you can have a confidence level that the products coming from traceable and sustainable fishery so you got the what I, what i mean solomon right yes sir that's yes sir copy sir i'm Thank talking you. yeah that's why i'm talking today with the certification because without any certification nobody cares about your products you cannot uh, talk only but you need to prove okay yes sir thank okay so uh, i will read the question in the chat room so first from paul gary oh sorry irene irene sir arifin is this certification apply only for export product and in your country indonesia did you already apply it to your fishery products locally thank you okay yes the first who uh, is driven the certification is the buyers the buyers asking to the retailers retailer request to the producers or to the suppliers supplier requesting to the producer to ensure the products display to the supermarket is recognized or certified so mostly product of indonesia even product from philippines even product from malaysia even product from the other countries vietnam thailand india certification is for the export product but now we are starting with some company also have uh, have a goodwill have a uh, they have a policy they have an internal policy to put eco label logo and then sold locally so yes we already started uh, within uh, uh, two years ago and some products in indonesia have also eco label for bap mostly for uh, aquaculture for the sea uh, for the uh, sea catch wild catch we are starting to uh, to give an awareness because uh, certification is not a cheap it's not a uh in the short term because it is so have to they have to uh, plan for the long term because they're uh, involving many people and uh, need a big balance or need a big uh <clears throat> you know money yeah have a uh, not a small money is big money 
And then uh, Stephen Young, what I mean is that fish is eat microplastic in which case that could be a biomagnification of consumer of microplastic. And does this mean that uh, only clean high quality of fish product from aquaculture only? Okay, the uh, eat microplastic is if they have an uh, impact to the people who consume. So it's related to the, uh, related to the food hazard, right? As long as the parameter of the quality and food safety is already met to the standard, it's met to specification, it's not the issue. But if you have a concern about the microplastic and the microplastic can make causing a, a chemical hazard, for example, it could can causing, for example, I don't know uh, what, the, what the significant effect to the human because uh, you, you need to identify the potential hazard that can be significant impacting to the human health and forcing to the human health. And when the uh, agent or the chemicals agent or the chemicals uh, contaminants is will uh, coming, uh, it will be, uh, uh, it will be become, it will become a, a chemical hazard which have a significant uh, health. It could be, it probably, they have to put in the hazard analysis and critical control point as a system they, they need to identify microplastic as a microbiological hazard, uh, sorry, chemical hazard. So clean, high quality is uh, a quality food safety environment is different uh, overview. That's why a good certification program, they combining every single uh, overview involving the food safety, involving the environmental friendly, involving to the habitat impact ecosystem, and involving animal welfare for the aquaculture, for example. Okay, Mr. Okay, Samsu Arifin. Uh, okay, because we don't have much time left. We already okay, have yeah. one. We, we already have one uh, participant to ask who already raised okay. her hands here with us, Jenia Dewijaya. Hello, Jenia. Um, hi. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Arifin, thank you so much for the presentation. It was really insightful. So I do have like two questions, actually. The first one okay. is that, what is the com the common size of the facility uh, that you think needed or necessary to have certification? Do you think like small facility can have it? Because you mentioned that it's pretty expensive, right? Sorry. And the second one is that, uh, is there any enforcement for the government right now uh, for the businesses to have certification? Or is it still just like uh, optional? Or is it already mandatory okay. like you mentioned, like halal certification? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good question. The first. It's apply for the big or medium uh, to small scale. It's depend. It's depend on their vision. It's depend on the expectation because have a certification not always uh, directly giving you the impact with the price. You have a certification. You uh, will can uh, selling this one dollar more expensive. No, just like halal certification. You have product halal. You have more trust. You have a certification. You have more trust from the customer, and you have an opportunity to select the market, actually. You can go into the low market, medium market, or high-end market. So having certification is give you an opportunity. Big, medium, or small scale is, yeah, again, that depend on the mindset, depend on the expectation, depend on the vision, depend on the mission of the company. So it's not the issue. So because many companies in Indonesia also starting from, from UKM, you know, uh, small scale industries, and then they are requesting by their buyers to have a certification, to have a recognition, and they're starting to uh, certify the, uh, the facility, the products. And then now they have a, you know, competitive advantage uh, to, uh, to the global market. Yeah. And the second question is related to the government. You have to understand that there are two types of certification. The first is mandatory certification, and the second is voluntary certification. Mandatory certification is coming from the government. For example, in Indonesia, if you have a, a facility to produce fish, you have certified from uh, KKP, Kementerian Kelautan Perikanan, which is uh, Ministry of Marine and Fisheries. You have to certified with SKP, is prerequisite program or uh, certificate kelayakan pengolahan 
and then second you have to certified by government is hazard system hazard analysis and critical control point it's mandatory in indonesia and you have the option you have a voluntary requesting by your customer they request about bap they request about psp they request about the msc it's depend on the market right so in uh, government is not cannot push the uh, the cannot push the uh, private sector because this private sector this is regulatory it's different uh, rules different approach yeah private sectors or private standard certification what i'm telling you in the presentation is related to the private sectors who request that the buyers the buyers is b2b business to business but the government will have a policy to support to support every single players to support every single uh, stage of business to have competitive in the market for example when you have uh, one uh, when you export your products to USA you have comply to the local requirements in Indonesia and you have to comply with the US regulation or destination countries regulation in US you have registered with the US FDA registration and you have to comply with the customer requirement the customer requirements is not mandatory it depend on your customer so okay Zinia, uh clear what i'm talking about yeah yeah thank you so much okay anything okay. uh andy Yes, okay, thank you so much, Mr. Syamsu Arifin. That's it, okay, we already have so much question that uh, already answered by you, Mr. That was amazing answer. And thank you very much to all the participants that already give their question. That was really amazing discussion, right, Via? Right, and many participants are really excited in the discussion. Yeah, you are right. And there participant who still have a question. Don't worry, we still have another 13 days to discuss about it or to discuss it in our official Telegram group. Or you can uh, through Mr. Shamsun according to his contact person that have been given by him. Okay, and uh, okay, then uh, maybe a last, uh, last, last word from me uh, before okay. I'm closing. This is closing statement, yeah. Okay, uh, sir. Every single every single entity now thinks about the uh, sustainable right so yeah you have to also consider that the current issue what i'm talking is msc asc bap bsp is now uh, the trend now the trend that uh, driving driving all of the uh, business for the seafood business aquaculture business sea catch business around the world so uh, the, my message is please consider that you need also to, to understand about the, all the requirements. What I'm talking about is only the, the big, uh, only the introduction, only the awareness. Yeah. So what I'm expecting is please study every single requirement and then please benchmark to the, uh, when you uh, bring the issue to the, uh, to the company or to the, when you're visiting the factory or when you're entering the business. So because uh, certification business, uh, no, fish business, fishery business, fisheries industries cannot be uh, only supporting by uh, science, but need also technical things related to the requirements, updating to the regulation. And the vision is make our world is, uh, we can eat fish until our grandchildren, until forever, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Sorry for the info convenience. If there any uh, noise or any uh, any uh, connection is not good, uh, anytime you can contact me. You can send me an email if you need the question. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Samsu Arifin, for the closing statement. Okay, next, what we have here? Okay, uh, next. Uh, before we move forward to another agenda. Uh, let's uh, give an applause to uh, Mr. Chancho Arifin for the amazing presentation and good answer. Okay, now uh, we would like to invite uh, Dr. Rondi Nugraha to explain the term and condition of this summer course program to all of the participants. To Mr. Rondi Nugraha, time is yours. 
Uh, thank you, Pierre, and thank you, Ande. Thank you, uh, Pasamsul, for a very insightful uh, presentation today. Uh, I think we, we learn a lot about certification and sustainability for uh, seafood uh, I mean, during this uh, session. Uh, before we move forward uh, to the next uh, I think lecture, I think today uh, we're gonna, we, we, are, uh, we, we only have one lecture, but tomorrow then we will have a, a more lecture uh, coming. Uh, I would like to uh, in, um, inform about the uh, term and condition and also the rules uh, for our summer summer course. Uh, of course, because uh, this, is not, uh, this is a formal summer course where we are going to give you a certificate of credit earning. And so we have rules that you need to follow. Let me share my screen. Okay. I hope uh, I hope you can see my presentation. Okay. So these are the terms and condition for our third summer course, 2021, Department of Aquatic Product Technology. Uh, the teaching methods in our summer course uh, will be divided into three uh, different uh, uh, methods. First, we are going to have a lecture. Uh, today is the first lecture. And then we are going to have a presentation and discussion, and then final report. And I will uh, ex explain uh, briefly about of each method. First, for the lecture, uh, we have, I think, 11 lectures. Uh, today, the first one, and tomorrow, uh, we are going to have an another other two lectures and then followed by um, I think next week uh, and so in total we gonna have uh, 11 lectures that you need to follow uh, each lecture uh, I think for 16 to 90 minutes and followed by 30 to 60 minutes uh, discussion it depends on the question and de uh, depends on the on the time uh, as well so uh, I think if the lecture is only for 60 minutes and you have a uh, quite a lot of equation, then we, we can extend the discussion to 60 minutes. And then we, we have also quiz. Uh, so after the lecture, uh, we'll, we will give you uh, questions. Uh, you need to fill out, uh, you need to answer, and the quiz is part of our assessment. So please uh, listen to the lecture, read the materials, and then answer the question. So uh, the question, uh, the quiz is, uh, we, we will not have a 100 question quiz, only 10 or 20 uh, question for each lecture. So no need to worry about the, the quiz. Uh, it will not be so difficult. And then for the presentation, uh, beside of lectures, you, so we expect you to present uh, your, 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 your mind and your knowledge uh, in the presentation. Uh, so, we, we, we will divide you into different group of uh, people. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so this is, we, we will have, I think, 20 groups. Uh, yeah, I think 20 groups, because we, we have more than 130 students, so we need to divide it into uh, 20 groups. We don't want to, uh, to have too many people in each group, so uh, only seven, seven, seven students in each group. Uh, we will, uh, I think, distribute this uh, uh, this group to to you by email, so you don't need to read uh, where my name is uh, in this presentation. So we're gonna we're gonna give you uh, this uh, this uh, groups uh, via email, but uh, each group need to create a presentation. You need to make a presentation. Uh, first, uh, what's the, to the topic of presentation? First, they need to create a master plan of sustainable seafood production. So we need to find a worldwide seafood problem and then explain the current situation of the problem. And then you need to prepare a master plan uh, to resolve the problem. And also some, some short, uh, I think, uh, I think 
uh, short-term uh, solution, which is doable in, in the near, near future, one year ahead. Uh, so the presentation will be divided into two uh, different uh, terms. First, we have a midterm presentation. Uh, I think it will be on next week or next week, I think, next week, Tuesday. So each group, uh, you need to present uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the knowledge or maybe the, uh, the master plan uh, in three minutes and two minutes for discussion. So this is only uh, introduction. Uh, no need to present the full uh, layout, uh, full uh, master plan. So just uh, the problem, what's the background and what's the purpose of uh, your, 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 your solution. So only three minutes and two minutes for discussion. And then uh, in the last, uh, I think uh, the last day of uh, the summer course, uh, you will present uh, your master plan. Uh, each group has 10 minutes to present and five minutes uh, for question and answer. So this is uh, 15 minutes in total where you need to present your uh, the problem solving idea that you, 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 you can create during the discussion within your, your group. And then we, we have an assessment. So this is the, the, the rubric for the assessment of your presentation. And uh, this is a part of uh, your summer course session as well. So please do it uh, seriously. So we have 50 to seven and then seven to 80 and 80 to, uh, to 100, uh, where uh, we, we, we judge or we assess based on this uh, criteria. Uh, the presentation materials, 30%, and intonation and articulation, 40%, and also the discussion, 30%. Uh, and last, uh, we, we have a final report. Uh, you need to, to write a 500-word report. And uh, the topic for this report is uh, propose how you can contribute as a specialist, uh, I mean, in, in, your, uh, in your area, of course, to achieve your group's uh, master plan. So you, you discuss your master plan during the presentation and now you need to report or you need to, to write uh, your, I mean, in your specialist, in your field. And also, of course, you need to propose a title of your research paper related to the master plan. And so this is the, the, the evaluation for the summer course. So you have quiz, 30% uh, 30, 30 and midterm presentation, 10%, final presentation, 50%. And then we will have a teammates uh, scores men uh, and final report 20%. So in total we have 100%. And if you complete this uh, evaluation and also attend all the lectures, 100% uh, uh, attend all the lectures, then we will give you a certificate of credit earning. So I need to emphasize again. So we will give certificate of credit earning for those who attend all lectures and also uh, join with the presentation. And beside the presentation, so this is the group, uh, we will distribute uh, this material to you by email. So you don't need to, to find your name here. And also we, we, we have individual poster competition. So this is uh, optional. If you, if you want to contribute and earn some prize, then you can uh, join with this uh, poster competition. Uh, so the poster, uh, you need to, to create a one page poster so in PowerPoint uh, with a white screen like uh, my, my screen now. So the, uh, the, the, the topic for the poster, first you can uh, present your research. Uh, I believe that some of uh, participants in this summer course uh, are graduate student or master student and also doctoral student. So you can use your research uh, to, I mean, to create uh, the poster. Or you can create the poster to campaign good handling practice in fish or uh, in fish or seafood, sorry. Or you can make a poster to campaign seafood consumption or promoting fish 
this consumption. So this is the three topics that uh, you can choose where you uh, uh, for for your for your poster. Uh, the post the format for for the poster one page PowerPoint and and then uh, you need to make a presentation for for your poster so three minute presentation and you can uh, you can add a intro or yeah. like a end video but uh, less than thirty second in total and then you upload the video in YouTube if you don't want uh, people see your YouTube you can limit your your video as uh, unlisted so you can just send us the link and we can see uh, your uh, videos with the link and uh, so this is uh, the assessment criteria so we have a design and then content creativity and also presentation time in video and don't forget to upload the the file i mean in, in this link uh, ipb.link poster summer course 2021. This is one of example for, for the uh, three minute poster competition. So, so you have like, uh, like this. Before the antibiotic so this is uh, your poster. Staph infections and commonly led to death. Our grandparents survived these infections because of penicillin. But did you know that if you were to contract that same infection? Okay. And this is some uh, other example for, for the post presentation as well. I think that's it uh, for, for the term and condition. Uh, I forget to mention that for the post competition, we will give, uh, I think, how to call it, 700, uh, 750,000 uh, rupiah for the first winner. And then six hundred thousand rupiah for the second, and five hundred thousand rupiah for the for the third winner. And we, uh, I need to mention as well for the presentation, uh, we will give a, a prize uh, the for, for the best uh, presenter as well. Uh, please do it. Uh, I mean seriously, and, and try to impress the judge later. I think that's all for, for the term and, and condition. Uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to, to ask uh, the committee here and I think the host. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Roni Nugraha, for the term and condition explanation. And we would like to remind you guys to fill the presence form that you can find in the link in the chat column. Make sure that you already feel it because is it so important, right here. Yeah. And if you have any question, please let us know through Telegram group chat, and any information will be updated there. So make sure you already join the group. And okay, the ladies. Link, yeah. yeah. And you can okay. See the link in the group in the chat, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the end of the opening the third summer course of seafood sustainability and safety in Asia Pacific. On behalf of the host and committee, we would like to extend once again our appreciation to you all, uh, to you for your participation. Don't worry, it is not the end of us because tomorrow we will meet again in another expected agenda at. 13 p.m. in Indonesian times at 13 GMT plus 7. So please stay, stay healthy and stay safe. Put your mask uh, on all the time if you want to go anywhere because your healthy is matter during this pandemic. So we can meet tomorrow with joy and more blessing. Okay, once again, thank you guys. Good luck and good afternoon. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, sir. Um, thank you. Bye. Thank Where's you. Thank 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 you. We're going to have a lecture.
kanimpia. Kampus terbaik, inspirasi, tebarkan harapan. Kampus terbaik, inovasi, wujudkan impian. Kampus terbaik, integritas, kuatkan tujuan. Kampus terbaik, beri terbaik untuk negeri, untuk dunia. Umat manusia dan alam semesta Mari bersama hadirkan masa depan Dalam langkah dan pikiran agar selalu terdepan Berbekal ilmu dan jiwa pengabdian Deras arus zaman takkan tertahan Majulah melangkah, oh majulah Terima Kampus terbaik, inspirasi, tebarkan harapan Kampus terbaik, inovasi, wujudkan impian Kampus terbaik, integritas Kuatkan tujuan Kampus terbaik Beri terbaik Untuk negeri Untuk dunia Umat manusia Dan alam semesta Mari bersama Hadirkan masa depan Dalam langkah dan pikiran Agar selalu terdepan Berbekal ilmu dan jiwa pengabdian Deras arus zaman takkan tertahan Majulah melangkah, oh majulah Rai kesempatan wujudkan kampus terbaik selamanya.
Okay, see you everyone. See you tomorrow. I will end the meeting today now. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye.